Hello everyone, this is Jonathan here, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at how code in Unity and how code in MonoDevelop is written, uh, what it exactly it is you're looking at, and how it makes sense. And this is important because if you're a beginner coder, uh, if you've never looked at code before like I had a couple of months ago, it's gonna it might appear very confusing at first. You're gonna see all of this stuff here and wonder uh, how does anyone read through this? Like, what? How much sense does it make? Do you read this like a book? Uh, is it up to down? Is it down to up? And it can kind of seem overwhelming, uh, but it, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. And to show you exactly how you look at this, I've created a new script and I've just called it Sample. Uh, this is what a script looks like when it's created right from the beginning in Unity in Mono Develop. Uh, and I'm going to go through all this in order and show you exactly what this means. So by default, this is what a script looks like. It's just this stuff. At the very top, you have these two lines that says using Unity Engine and using System.Collections. Uh, this comes here by default, and this basically allows your script to use a whole bunch of uh, predetermined lines of code and things that it really needs to run. Uh, with, without getting too technical, just know that you don't want to delete that. It does need to be there. And you can type in extra stuff. Uh, you can add in additional using statements, but if you're just starting out, don't worry about any of that right now. The next thing you have is this line called public class sample mono behavior. What the heck does this mean? Well, public is uh, basically means it can be accessed from uh, different areas in Unity and Mono Develop. The word class refers to a script. A, any script, this script or any of these other scripts I have open, these are all classes. And sample is just the name I gave it. So this one is called sample, this one is called player score, this one here is called, uh, if I go to the top, this one here is called player. And mono behavior, that's a little more complicated to uh, explain. But I'm going to show you a keyboard shortcut. If you hover the mouse over this word or any of these lit up words and you pr hold control and you press the single quotation button next to the enter key, it will open a web browser in the Unity documentation and then you can click on it and you can get more information. And what mono behavior does is it allows you to access a bunch of different functions within Unity. So these are all predetermined lines of code, they're, they're sort of reserved definitions, they all do specific things. So you don't have to code any of these lines or these words individually. Uh, they're all for free use, but you can only use them if at the top of your class it says model behavior. Uh, you basically, don't delete this. Next, you have these this little squiggly bracket. And if you see here, as I hover my mouse, or if I hover the mouse over this, this squiggly bracket down here also lights up. And if I put my cursor here, this top one lights up. And these are called code brackets. And this just means that everything contained between these two brackets uh, is part of this behavior. So this, from here to here, the entire, everything in between, is all part of this mono behavior, this start uh, function in this update function. And you can see that we have the squiggly brackets here as well. I put the cursor here and this one lights up. And I put the cursor here and this one lights up. And I think a good metaphor for this is just like file folders on your computer. So if I go into, I have all my shortcuts here. Uh, but let's go into, uh, I, I don't know, documents or something. And if I go all, all of these are like these code brackets. I can go into Adobe, I can go into Bioware, I can go into Camtasia, I can go into Diablo, and these are all contained, these are all these things contained within squiggly brackets. So these are file folders for other code. Uh, now this is, a, basically this is where the code is actually contained. You have void, start, two brackets, and then another curly bracket. And anything you type in here, uh, it can be called at a certain time, a certain interval. Now, by default, you have these two, void start and void update. 
when your program runs, when you hit the play button for the first time, if you have this script within the scene you're working on, whatever is within the start function will, will happen automatically. And so will whatever happens in the update function. The difference is whatever you have typed in here will only appear once, and whatever you have typed in here an update will appear at the start of every single frame. So if I just use a print statement and I say, this is the start method, and then I put a print statement here as well and say, this is the update method, I can put this script into action, save it first, and you can see exactly what it's going to do. So to put it into action, I have to create an empty game object. I have to attach it to this uh, game object. And then I'm going to open up the console so you can take a look. Clear all these weird little errors, they don't matter. Run the program, and you'll see now that this game object is in the scene. You'll see it says here, this is the start method. And over here on the right, you can see it's only performed that once. And it says underneath, this is the update method. And every single frame, it's running that print statement again. That's what these numbers mean. It's just doing it over and over and over. So that is what these start and print methods mean. And you can create other ones too. And they're created in sort of the same way. Void awake is another one that runs at a predetermined time. It runs just like the start method or the start function, but it runs before it. It, it happens in order in a sequence, awake and start. You can also create uh, these functions with whatever names you want. Uh, void, hello world. That's a very common one you're going to hear in computer lingo. So this won't run unless I tell it to run. And I can tell it to run by typing within either my start or awake function. Uh, I just write hello world, two brackets, and a semicolon. And now at the start, uh, as soon as it hits this line of code, it will start to run whatever is in between these brackets here. And there are other, so there are these uh, functions that will run under predetermined conditions. These are not the only examples, but I'm not going to go into what those other examples are because that's not the point of this video. I just want to show you how uh, mono develop and how code actually gets read. So you can create as many of these little file folder placeholders for code as you want within your script. It's a good way of keeping it organized. And if you take a look at some of these other scripts I have here, you can see them too. Here's the start uh, function. Here's update, which is calling this count score. So every frame within the game, this is running because it's called here. And that's this again. I could put all this code here within this update function and would work the exact same, but we just do it this way to make it a little more organized and so you have more control over what is running and when. And again, within these if statements, you can see the same thing is happening. Uh, this curly bracket here, let me make it larger. This curly bracket here relates to this one down here. This curly bracket relates to that one and so forth. And it's, it's done the same way throughout the whole thing. This on trigger enter 2D, this is a predetermined one that runs at us. Uh, you don't have to call it, it will run upon a certain condition being met within the program. Uh, uh, you, now, of course, at this point, you don't need to have to know what all the, all these lines of code do, how it runs, but hopefully that gives you a better idea of how to go through one of these scripts and actually read everything that's contained within. Uh, I hope that's useful information. Please let me know what you thought, if you have any questions, and if you just really, really liked what I had to say here. Thanks very much for watching.